Good morning, everyone. It's my honor to welcome you all in the second edition of Orange City Literature Fest, organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation. I, Namanshi Gandhari, will be the anchor for this session, and the topic of this session is Immunity Building Ingredients of India, which is of 40 minutes. So, you will get a buzzer after 30 minutes of session to sum up the session. The guest for this session is Parvinder Bali sir. Parvinder Bali sir is program manager of and culinary services at the Oberoi Center of Learning and Development OCLD New Delhi. He is certified hospitality educator from the American Hotel and Lodging Association. He is a certified professional chef from the Culinary Institute of America and also a certified chef DQZ from the American Culinary Federation. Chef Bali is the recipient of the prestigious Government World Cookbook Awards held in Spain from quantity for production, operations, and Indian cuisine. Chef Dumaldar will be the moderator of this session. He's a consultant chef and entrepreneur, started his journey from Taj Lake Palace in 1997, exposed to cruise lines which sailed through Miami, Brazil, Barcelona, formed his own management company, Innovating Hospitality, which manages hotels and restaurants. His catering segment is Akshay Tej, which handles weddings, caterings, and events in Adapur and Rajasthan. Handing the session to you, Vimal, sir. Namaskar, Dr. Chef Vimal uh, on the platform of Orange City Literature First. And I would like to uh, really congratulate uh, for this uh, initiative, uh, which is, uh, uh, and, uh, and also I'm very really thankful to my dear friend, uh, Mr. Ravi Mishra. We were batchmates also a long time back. And, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, people after so many years at uh, a platform like this, it's very inspiring. And, uh, you know, Chef Bali uh, being a part of it. I mean, rather, we are being a part of this prestigious uh, session. So this is really, really very amazing. And I'm sure it's going to be a learning session for crisp uh, 30, 35 minutes, 40 minutes. So not uh, wasting much time here. And... Uh, Introducing and welcoming Chef uh, Bali. Namaskar, Chef. Namaskar. And, uh, and, uh, so the topic for today is uh, immunity building ingredients. And uh, we all are uh, being very loud these days talking about uh, the immunity ingredients. So Chef, uh, in your words, uh, I would like to uh, hear it from you that what exactly immunity and uh, how is it different for different people uh, region wise so uh, if you would like to be uh, kind enough to give us a little uh, prakash on this thank you. thank you thank you everybody and it's my really pleasure to uh, be a part of the orange city literature fest for the second time this time it is different because we are doing almost 80 things in our lives on a virtual platform so last year, I had an opportunity to actually visit Nagpur. That was the first time I visited Nagpur. And it was amazing interacting with, you know, all different people who had come from different parts of the country. Uh, but I'm very happy to be here. And I'm going to talk to you all about immunity building dishes of our country. Uh, now, you know, I always think that Corona or the COVID times has been the boon in disguise. So many things around us has changed. Um, you know, I had written an article in one of the magazines last year in October, where I was talking about culinary education and, you know, how it should be changing. Uh, that, you know, we should have more of uh, recorded lectures and, you know, we should have a student-based learning. So a lot of things that were written in October. And, uh, you know, I had some senior chefs actually call me and say, Bali, kya likh rahe tu? You know, how is it possible that we can ever have culinary education online? Uh, but, you know, that is where we are, that in, in, in March this year, right after five months, we were doing all that stuff. So these things already existed in our place, you know, the Zoom, the WebEx, they were always there, but we did not know so much about them. And this is the, again the thing about the immunity building foods. They have been there for last hundreds of years. 
but we have now started giving importance to those now because necessity is the mother of invention so as a human mankind whenever you are forced uh, to look at alternatives that is going to affect your health one doesn't do it you know aapki bimari ka ilaaj tab tak nahi karte ho when doctor doesn't come and tell you listen it's getting worse for you and now you need to do something so i have seen people who have put on weight and they want to start reducing because doctor has now said that it will be unhealthy for you but it's not that you did not know you were overweight you know two years ago or few months ago so sometimes we need a wake up call and i'm happy that covid has given us a wake up call where we are started looking at immunity building dishes immunity building ingredients and you know you see all kind of ingredients now available on the vegetable market where people have started asking for them so one of the classical ingredients i'll give you an example like that is called moringa the moringa are the leaves of drumsticks now these leaves from time immemorial have been used in south indian cuisine you know there's a there's a dal which is made by the leaves of moringa but unless you know covid came in if we served dal moringa in in a restaurants you know guests wouldn't take fancy to it to say kya khila rahe ho you know what are these leaves i've never even heard heard about it but today moringa is out of stock in the markets you know and people have started dehydrating moringa and creating it for tea and you know so many other things that are happening so i have moringa here chef yeah <laughs> uh, you have moringa so that that that's amazing now apart from moringa my also the thing is that you know lot of us do not look inwards at our own country at our own history at our own culture and the ingredients we have here to offer but on the other hand we get very influenced by the western world so i'll give you a very classical example of starbucks launched a coffee uh, in us and it was called uh, sorry they they launched a the milk one of the companies launched a milk uh, starbucks also launched a coffee starbucks launched a coffee called bullet coffee now bullet coffee was black coffee blended with cream and coconut oil and it's a rage in us you know the it's called bullet coffee and lot of people on keto diet are actually having bullet coffee because it keeps you full for a long time but what became very popular in us in last one year was called the golden milk now golden milk you know people are running after this golden milk and it is nothing but the purana dadi ma ka nuska where turmeric is mixed into the milk and it's haldi wala doodh but you know the and, and another example i'll give you when i was in lockdown and i saw everywhere people posting up this coffee videos of i think dalgona coffee yes 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 it was dalgona only <laughs> you know when i saw that i was so amused i said this is how we have grown up having coffee at home you know it used to be an exercise where five six people would be you will get tired you will pass it on to somebody but nobody knew about that beautiful coffee until it came to our lives as dalgona coffee and they were you know everywhere instagram videos and facebook posts on that and everybody who knew what the coffee was would always go like this oh my god what is this new thing exactly <laughs> what is about the immunity building dishes i'll take you to some of the you know very amazing ingredients that we have in our in our country and they are absolutely amazing and one must you know try and use them into the cuisine because uh, we should not let this corona virus let us down you know we should all wash our hands uh, eat right exercise well practice social distancing and don't stress you know what you what you can't control but how can we can control what we can eat and um, and all these ingredients that i'm going to discuss right now they are uh, they boost your immunity but immunity will only help you once you also do a bit of exercise you know to keep your body strong which is important true so Very one of the thing i discussed was moringa these leaves are from the drumstick trees and you go you can make smoothies out of it you you can make chutney out of it if you want or simply you can you know cook it like a sabzi or cook it with the dal absolutely but the other um, uh, important ingredient as a herb is the oregano so oregano we all think that it's a italian herb but let me tell you it is very indian the sure. uh, the oregano which grows in the himachal region etc it's called mirjan mirzan josh in hindi 
So if you get fresh oregano from somewhere, the usage of oregano, it is mentioned in the Ayurvedic text. text. So the Hindi Ayurvedic word is Virzan Josh. What exactly it, is that, Chef? It's oregano. The oregano that people get dried oregano, which they put on yes, pizza, pastas and pizza. They have, they have uh, velvety leaves, uh, Chef. Oregano yeah. leaves. Uh, yeah. What Hindi name you mentioned, Chef? Uh, what Mirzan, was that? Mirzan Josh. Okay. M I R Z A N J O S H. It prevents stomach viruses. It also, you know, fights the cold. So this time around, it's very important that you know you do not. Uh, concur cough and cold because this is one of the things that you know you'll be put up for the COVID testing. Even if you don't have COVID, you will go, you'll be going somewhere and you might get COVID. So please uh, control your cough and cold and flu at this point in time, which is not good. Fennel is the another thing. Fennel, so we all know soft, but soft comes from this plant called fennel plant. So the fennel plant in, in European Mediterranean cuisines have been used for sauteing, grilling, pan frying. Uh, it's spiced up, saved and used in salads. But fennel again is very anti-inflammatory. It helps combat viral infections. And uh, you know, if you get a fresh fennel, you can obviously just slice the raw fennel and add it into your salads. It's very, very refreshing. Tulsi, Tulsi also known as holy basil. Uh, it's called Tulsi in, in India. We always have, you know, revered Tulsi as the wife of Lord Vishnu and its worship. But I think Tulsi has some magical powers. It can be used for, I know we have a religious sentiment that Tulsi cannot be paired with, you know, a non-vegetarian or meat dishes. And I wouldn't suggest do it. But I will only tell you that in Thai countries, the basil is used a lot in stir frying along with chicken and meats. And it's called krapao. So this, uh, uh, the Thai word for the holy basil is called the krapao. But agar hum tulsi khate hai, we can we can eat tulsi the you know the traditional way by by you know pounding it slightly and mixing honey and black pepper inside it. We can we can brew it in tea. All you have to do is heat water. When it comes to boiling, switch it off. Tear the you know tulsi with your hands and just throw it in and cover it. And then you can strain it off. And you can obviously touch base of honey with it. So Tulsi is very good. If you're growing Tulsi in the backyard, even it can grow in your balconies in your house. Tulsi ke jab beech nikalte hai, you take these seeds and crush them in your hand and you have it with honey. They're, they're magical. They look like chia seeds. Even the seeds, if you soak them in water, they will look like chia seeds in, in the morning. So that is again one of the things you can do. You can add it to your milkshakes. So you can have Tulsi in varieties of ways. Uh, then, of course, garlic. You know, garlic can really enhance your immune system. Um, it stimulates your protective immunity cell. And it, it it can be eaten in varieties of ways. You know, people who cannot eat garlic, of course, there are garlic pills which are available uh, in the market. But I would suggest that use garlic. Like, Italian garlic a lot. In the chutneys, like pesto, for example, is a lot of garlic and basil together. So we can create our own chutneys, you know, our own style of pesto. We can have a little bit of chutney, little green chilies, a little bit of fresh coriander. We can take some garlic. We can take some oil, you know, and, and blend that together to create like a paste, which can be, you know, just fried with anything or just eaten as it is like a chutney. Rajasthan mein garlic ki chutney banti hai. You know, you take that uh, spicy kind of a chutney. Garlic ka achar banta hai. So in whichever form you can consume garlic, garlic is very, very good um, for your health again. And it really helps in building your immunity. The other ingredient which the world knows and has copied from us is the ginger. So the adrak. And there's a kahawad bandar ke jane adrak ka swad. But I think ginger is uh, really one of a very, very amazing uh, ingredient that's available in our country, fresh ginger. You can peel it, you can chop it, you can slice it, you can smash it and add it to your tea. Uh, you can add ginger to almost anything. Ginger is a very versatile ingredient. And when it's versatile, it is because you can use it up in tea, to salad, to main courses, and even desserts. You know, the, the most famous ginger cookies or most of the sweet preparations made in Christmas all have a flavor of ginger in them. 
And ginger is, you know, again has antiviral activity due to its high concentration of the potent compounds uh, that it, uh, you know, uh, uh, it has basically. Now, you know, apart from all this, I think uh, there are many other things that are available in India now, uh, uh, especially now in the time of winter. Nagpur is very famous for this, is the oranges. So I'm here talking not specifically just an orange, but a citrus fruit. So any citrus fruit. I mean, you have oranges, you have lime, uh, you have grapefruit, which is called chakotra. So vitamin C is very, very important in these winter months because, you know, they contain vitamin C and uh, uh, it helps to prevent you catching cold and cough because it's a very strong immune building thing. And, uh, you know, um, people who don't have uh, um, uh, vitamin C during uh, the winter will always see that, you know, you have a little bit of cracks on your lips, on the side which can also result to something called scurvy as a disease. But I think uh, wherever you can include uh, fruit in your diet, please go ahead and do so. Uh, and uh, usually a vitamin C, what we require, our body requires a 75 milligram for women and maybe 90 milligram for men. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, just, a, you know, having two lime in a day probably helps sort your problems out. You can also have an orange, yeah, uh, and that is also very good. Shimla milch is another thing. Both when you have red peppers, yellow peppers, green peppers, you know, they are the very rich source of vitamin C again. And, uh, you know, many people think that, you know, only probably a green color thing has a lot of vitamin C. But let me tell you, bell peppers, which are even red in color, almost three times more vitamin C than a lime. Uh, or any citrus fruit. So, including That's amazing. bell peppers and all into your dish because it's a rich source of beta carotene, and uh, you know it, it is it, it keeps your skin very nice. And uh, beta beta carotene it also converts into vitamin A in in, in 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 a process of sunlight. So that is how you know you'll even get your nice eyesight and uh, skin healthy. So that is about this. Aajkal broccoli has become milti hai. Broccoli has become probably also known as Haryali Gopi now. Uh, and every local vendor has broccoli. So broccoli is the super charged vegetable with vitamins and minerals. Um, it, it contains also vitamins like A, C, E, and also has a lot of fiber. So when you eat gobi or broccoli, it's a dandhal, don't throw that off. In fact, peel it up and try and convert it into a soup or just keep it like a vegetable. Because the fibers again are very, very important for you to keep your, you know, bowel intact and uh, uh, it, it, it just flushes out the top, flushes out the top of the way from the body. Uh, you can make a tea very good tea. Let me, uh, you know, I was just talking to chef also about um, uh, this common ingredient called the turmeric. You know, Absolutely. one of the biggest uh, uh, I would say boon in our country, uh, given by the dadi mans uh, to us. But I was very surprised because I was talking to someone, you know, just a bunch of students, and I just knew this question that where does turmeric come from? Trust me, a 20-year-old who doesn't have any clue about food and how it is grown, very confused. They said, "Pata nahi, shayad industry mein banti hai. Maybe it comes from seeds." Trust me, there are many people of today's era who do not know where turmeric comes from. They don't know turmeric is a root. Forget about them knowing that turmeric is a fresh root that can be used in cooking. And the fresh turmeric is a lot of things. A powder turmeric probably is only used in curries. But a fresh turmeric can be ground into a paste and in UP and all, in Uttarakhand, they make a halwa out of uh, fresh healthy. Absolutely. And it's one of the most amazing dishes again. So haldi in any form, you know, that haldi, fresh haldi, if it can just be sliced or smashed along with ginger and some tulsi, you can just put it into the boiling water, switch it off, cover it for some time, let it, you know, let it just, uh, uh, the, uh, the flavors come through. It's one of the most amazing teas. You don't have to buy any green tea from the market. If you have a turmeric ginger, and a, and a tulsi tea every, every day in the morning. 
you know peak mein itna kuch hua tha that everybody was drinking different types of kaada and home to prevent corona aur kaada pp ke logon ki tabiyat kharab hogi because they started drinking so much of kaada you know which they never had so i i would say don't don't uh, overdo it kisi bhi cheez ka na it's not good to overdo anything so the regular things that we eat i think we just should be very conscious we should be mindful of what we eat we should have smaller portions include as much of fresh vegetables and fruits into your diet anything that you see packaged is never good for your health you know everything that is packaged will have uh, preservatives they will have some flavor enhancers so you know pehle to sab kuch natural flavor natural flavor sab likhte the but now by law also they are forced to write the correct information on the label so now what is read a label it will tell you that nature identical which naturally means that you know they are artificial but they are still identical flavors basically so be very careful of what you eat uh, um, of course these days nuclear families couples are working people have less time to cook but you know i would suggest you know look at quick dishes like salad something but include fresh fruits in your diet include these fresh leafy vegetables in your diet so all the leafy vegetables around you methi ho gaya palak ho gaya you know we are very excited with kale and collard greens because they are imported and you know people keep talking about it on social media and all but look within you have fresh fenugreek we have amazing types of palak uh, if you get even into the mountains you know um, so i am from kashmir and uh, sir akshit you would know that you know there's a there's a product in kashmir which we call it as care now that is basically if it touches your skin you really it, it bites it bites your skin now it is called nettle leaves this thing grows all across himalayan range in shimla it's called bichu booty bichu scorpion because it bites so hard uh, but that nettle nettle leaves if you read in the german cuisine the nettle leaves is one of the very very healthy things a bowl full of nettle leaves is only 2 kilo calories and you can actually cook nettle leaves in and around uttarakhand shimla people make curries out of it they they cook it like a spinach so when it is cut off the plant and when it is stir fried and cooked and I'm, i'm telling you nobody in the, even in kashmir knows that you can cook a vegetable out of that if i went to then i did that people will think i'm crazy that how can you cook something like this it's going to bite in your no nothing happens so when when you pluck the nettle leaves you can convert it into a soup you can make kebabs out of it you can cook it like a stir fried spinach you can use it in a multiple ways so so many ingredients you know if you just look at our own country they are absolutely full of nutrition they are absolutely great uh, you know tasty if they are cooked right but the only thing is you know it is so difficult to to even fix the younger generation with uh, palak and green leaves and everything so we have to probably now look at interesting ways on how to feed our children so one of the thing is you know as um, for example if you like i don't know kids of india today have been born up with the taste of pasta and pizza so pasta suddenly has become the new dish in the indian cuisine so theek hai koi buri baat nahi hai khao pasta but rather than making that white sauce you know and all that thing what you could also do is that combine few vegetables and cook them with milk probably and puree them like a sauce and cook your pasta in that sauce mai bata raha hu aapke sare bachche wo pasta kha jayenge but also have the vegetable along with that if they don't eat it otherwise that is few of the things for younger generation i'm talking about the kids at the age of 12 13 i think we have to fool them uh to create dishes uh you know which they can eat uh also in this lockdown i remember from april may onwards when we had lot of this watermelon available so bade everybody had become chef sanjeev kapoor in this lockdown if you saw the amount of posts that have come in on social media are all about families cooking together so i think i saw the trend from may till august august september that everybody at a home had become a chef Absolutely. मतलब इतनी इतनी मिठाइया घर में बना रहे थे पीपल आर मेकिंग घेवर एट होम पीपल आर मेकिंग रसमलाइज एट होम सो आई थिंक इट्स वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी हाउ फूड इज चेंजिंग आर वर्ल्ड तो उसमें तरबूज आता था घर में बड़ा सा तो आई फील द ग्रीन पार्ट ऑफ एंड 
you know the white part i grated it and i squeezed it normally and i used it for stuffing for the paratha it tasted just like a muli ka paratha without any muli flavor in it absolutely absolutely so those are the things that you know we can also look at inclusion in our diet uh, not creating a wastage and there are so many things that can be made from the peel uh, the things that we usually just throw away there are you know abroad mein nobody throws all these things in the kitchen when you're processing vegetables jitna bhi bachta hai sab kuch you put it in a pot and you simmer for 20 minutes to make a nice vegetable stock now rather than just adding water to your dishes if you add the stock at least you're adding some nutrition back into your dishes and and then leftover vegetables which are there you can put it in a pot outside and cover it with mud and you can make your own compost at home so please look at where you can preserve things where you, you know uh, derive the maximum nutrition out of the things as well sorry i can go on speaking uh, on this thing but if anybody has any questions i am happy to answer any questions okay great uh, uh, the way you explained and touched all the areas chef which is uh, i think i had few uh, questions uh, which you already covered most of it but uh, still uh, yes, yes. something like that how can we synchronize uh, all these immunity ingredients in a balanced diet that is one important thing which uh, uh, we'll have to learn and i think that will come with a uh, uh, lot of uh, practicing to what do you think chef yeah i, I think it, there's no harm in making a chart at your home and 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 don't make a chart for breakfast lunch dinner that become really monotonous but make a chart for a day ki at least today i will have this so whether it's in the form of smoothie or something and try it for a week or 10 days you will really love it you know i said that today i will feed my family with one soup which is made out of immune building dishes today i will have at least one brew tea of my immunity building things and when you start noticing a difference when you start seeing a difference within you for a month then you know that what you've been doing was right and it will become a habit so i think uh, to get to habitual to something is very important in our lives and we have to start slow a baby step at a time very true very true i was also thinking chef that why uh, the, should we use uh, i mean uh, ayurveda as you are into uh, learning and development so yeah. do you suggest that we should also add ayurveda in the curriculum of photo management colleges that will make a lot of uh, uh, enlightenment and uh, the young chefs are able to you know go in that direction where things you know i think that is really the need of the hour but when we do that curriculum we have to do lot of research and development and get right people on board connect with people who are actually practicing ayurveda because today it is a dying art very few people are practicing the real ayurveda you know so everything has become very commercial um, uh, i don't know last how many chefs went to rishikesh and climbed that mountains to actually pluck that herbs and things and researched about it sat with the old ancient saints to say isse kya hota tha usse kya hota tha you know so there are a lot of things that we have forgotten in our lives and i think we need to revive it back we need to have a very strong curriculum everybody talks about ayurveda uh, but you know the knowledge i think is very restricted and ayurveda mostly today has been used like lot of herbs and spices which are used for curing ailments but i think ayurveda is the way of life so absolutely so i i think yes it will be a great if it's included in the curriculum and it practices and people are told the benefits it will really help the coming the the coming uh, generations are very good uh, uh, it will be a help to them and chef uh, uh, in our uh, extensive uh, buffets at the hotels and restaurants all the five stars i think uh, it all starts from there as well uh, if uh, the, the the learned chefs can start inculcating the usage of those herbs uh, those uh, indian herbs uh, region wise maybe if you are in rajasthan if you are in kashmir if you are in punjab so all those areas have specific herbs and vegetables or the spices which are available and i think uh, what is what do you also feel that should it be there in the regular buffets and we should uh, make a mark out of it that you know what are the possibilities of 
Uh, I'm sure you getting my what I'm absolutely, coming from. Absolutely, that is the need of the hour, and we want the chefs to also create uh, dishes. And I think what we also need to do is, which most of the hotels are doing, you will see that if you visit any hotel which is located uh, in any city, you will always have a menu called regional specialties. So if we have an Obroy hotel in Rajasthan, on the menu it will have a separate section called regional specialties of Rajasthan. If you have a hotel in Shimla, we will have the Himachali Thali and the selection of regional dishes from the Himachal. Uh, so I think, yes, it is very important. It is the chefs and the farmers and the suppliers who need to have an interlinked bonding amongst themselves. Uh, how it happens in the Western world. You know, so it is very important. And I keep telling chefs that, you know, popularize a farmer who is in your community and get his fresh produce and write on your menu. There's no harm in writing that this soup is made from the potatoes from Babu Rao's farm. You know, that, and make the Babu Rao famous and, you know, some amount of money will go to him. He'll be excited to, you know, do stuff. And that is how we can change the things of today's uh, uh, situation in our country as well. You know, where a lot of farmers are getting poor and poor day by day. So, giving you an example from that, you know, so bajra is grain in our country. Ki. The bajra, now there are six or there are hundred types of bajra, but mostly there are six or seven types of bajra that are consumed in the Indian diet. And the Indian genetic structure is designed to consume bajra. Bajra is more healthy for us than the rice or the wheat, which came Absolutely. from the other parts of the world to our country. But, but because processing of bajra was a very painful thing at a house, where the lady had to pound the bajra and you know, there was joint family. So there was a lot of hard work for the woman that was sorted through the easily available grains like rice and wheat, where you would get them processed and it was easy to cook and, and manage. So bajra slowly, we completely lost bajra. But abhi aap dekho, pichle teen chaar saal se, lot of chefs are talking about bajra and their inclusion to dishes. People are making soups, salads, a uh, lot of things. So, which is, I, I, I say, suggest, uh, suggest chefs to actually make produce, put it up on your social media and make it aware to people. Because we chefs can only make people aware by cooking delicacies, which will then create the demand in the market and people will want to buy those ingredients. And hence the farmers will have to produce. Today, problem is the farmers don't produce anything that is healthy for someone. They will only produce looking at what return they will get. So if I plant this crop in my field, how much of money will I make at the end of the year? Very true. Very true. So if we can popularize bajra, which does not require more water, it's very easy to grow, it does not require maintenance, it's a very cheaper production for a farmer. But he wouldn't plant bajra because he'll say, Kaun khayega bajra? You know, a lot of people think that bajra is the food that's given to pigeons. But if there's a demand of bajra, then the farmer will spend probably you know, one fourth of the money to grow bajra that he's been growing other vegetables. But I think those are the things we need to really, you know, look at and work together in synchronization. Today, we all are working in our different own different pockets. But I think the synergy is what is required. Very much, sir. Very much. Uh, those... Uh... Uh, region wise uh, we already you all have already covered uh, the the ingredients uh, which are immunity boosters uh, winter immunity as we are into winters so the winter immunity boosters like garlic which you already mentioned methi ke laddu for uh, uh, you know young uh, pregnant women after the pregnancy that is required desi ghee ke saath mein ajwain ke laddu and all that stuff so uh, Moringa, which you already discussed. Moringa, uh, Dalchini, uh, hails from Kashmir. Yeah, uh, yeah. Curry leaves, Kali Mirch, Godka Pani, which is in uh, in Rajasthan. I generally see uh, the Jain community during their fasting. They, they do a lot of uh, this uh, liquor, which is just the good and uh, Kali Mirch. So that is a real, you know, um, yeah. immunity booster because they are fasting the whole day. Stuff like that. Bajre ki raap, maki, wheat, red wheat, chef. Red yes, wheat yes. is like forgotten. Yeah, true. So, very true. So, uh, and you know, uh, that is very interesting to know that red wheat hails from uh, Jodhpur uh, region. And yeah. uh, in a very small patch of uh, field, uh, people used to grow, but now the, even that is uh, getting uh, 
kind of uh, mm. so haldi wala dood the golden milk which you mentioned it is yeah. really amazing shalgam mm. and beetroot mm. yes so yeah all that so i think uh, you have covered almost all the points chef uh, one more thing which i also wanted to uh, wanted you to give us little uh, you know uh, prakash on it uh, the olive oil against the sarson ka tel so what do you <laughs> say about that you know so uh that has the highest marketing budget the company that has the highest marketing budget that oil suddenly becomes really good yeah. oil ke hame ye dekhna padega ki what is the use of the oil in particular what kind of oil because not every kind of an oil can be used for cooking olive oil definitely is very natural very herbal but you need to understand the oil you know you will see some, sometimes bottles called pure olive oil and people go for that ki are we should buy this pure olive oil so that pure olive oil word is not to uh, not to market their product but a pure, pure olive oil is a very inferior quality olive oil not to be used for cooking at all you have first press of oil called the extra virgin and it's extra virgin because it has acidity level between 1% to 2% second is the virgin olive oil third is a pomas it's called pomas whatever olive must be uh, remaining it is kind of refined uh, you know then to make pure olive oil so pure olive oil is remaining there three oils have already gone extra virgin virgin and pomas and what is left over now is mixed with some chemicals to refine it and hence it calls called the pure olive oil so don't go by these words understand what is the olive oil for and the extra virgin olive oil you would never cook in it because it It, it it breaks down at 80 degrees Celsius. Okay. So it is not as good had raw on your salads, etc. Now mustard oil in the raw form is very healthy, but you cannot eat mustard oil raw because it has a very pungent flavor. But there are also dishes that you can make with raw mustard oil, like in Bengal and Bihar, you see aloo ka chokha, where you actually add raw mustard oil to it. and that is your feeling and you know if you I, i will i will tell you a trick today to make your own indian wasabi now wasabi is something you know that people are eating japanese sushis they very fond of wasabi because it gives you a kind of kick in your nose you can make your own indian wasabi by boiling blanching green peas fresh green peas and then blend it with raw mustard oil you blend this paste together it is exactly taste like wasabi and you know you can relish it with nacho dips etc you will have the golden of mustard oil you will think you are having japanese wasabi and it is great and tasty and something really different so uh, yes look at your oil which oil would you uh, use for frying you need to use oil for frying which has a very high smoke point because the the oil when it starts smoking it becomes carcinogenic in nature because it uh, it's made of hydrogen and oxygen compounds and it becomes hydrogenated because more and more oxygen is going out in the air and the hydrogen is saturated so that oil suddenly starts becoming trans fats which is unhealthy for your body to use oil which has a very high smoke point like a rice bran oil peanut oil uh corn corn seed oil so these are the oils you know which can uh, which have a very high smoke point of 210 220 degrees celsius Whereas, whereas your frying only is happening at 150 degrees Celsius, so do not let your oil smoke uh, for constant long time because that becomes unhealthy. So, you know, I I understand you asked me the question about olive oil, but my thing of telling all this is that it's not always about the ingredient. You yes. need to understand the ingredient and the process, and and then use it for your cooking cooking thing. So, really oil, eating of ghee also is very healthy. Yeah. but you know ghee is something which is had more in summers and oil is something that is had in winters because it, as per ayurveda ghee is cooling for your body so, you know and, and oil is warming for your body so consume ghee in summers and consume oil in winters absolutely so very nicely explained chef thank you so much uh the ingredients which you mentioned uh, uh, about uh, 
द इम्यूनिटी वो ऑरिगेनो फेनल तुलसी गार्लिक जिंजर Yeah, shimla yeah. mirch was again amazing to know that shimla mirch uh, also has lot of uh, vitamins yes. and beta carotene. So that is uh, something new for me also to know. <laughs> uh, now, uh, if we talk about uh, Chef uh, Bali, uh, hailing from Kashmir, what what uh, is your favorite ingredients out there, Chef, uh, which you would like to promote more, uh, which is like. It's not uh, like even the the locals are not aware about that ingredient. Yeah, so I think Kashmir is magical, you know, because uh, it's got a very European climate, and Kashmir has these wonderful uh, vegetables that grow, uh, all different kind of leaves, like kadam hak, which is very famous. A lot of people think kadam is something that comes from the Gant Gobi, you know, the greens of Gant Gobi, but that's a nakli kadam. The real kadam is in English called the pollard greens. and they they really grow very wild in kashmir in kashmir there is however one ingredient that is only one vegetable that grows in the snow so it's like a it's like a palak it's called vasta hak so the vasta hak is the one that grows in the snow and no other vegetable can withstand that cold harsh climate and and something that grows in that colder climate is so tasty when it's just stir fried or you know boiled to a like a soup so those kind of ingredients but they're so perishable and there is not so much of a need for them in the outside uh, states it gets limited only to that part the other ingredient which is very common in italy in kashmir and also in the european countries called the quins in english it's called quins in kashmir we call it bumsoot and uh, now that as kids we remember that you know we used to have wood uh, wood wala chulas in the villages and we used to take this quince it 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 grown in october november that's the harvest time and then suddenly the snow comes so we used to put it near the charcoal and get, used to get char grilled and roasted then we used to peel it mash it and have it with honey you know it was so amazing but bamsoot is also cooked as a vegetable if you look at europeans they make uh, jellies and jams out of quince You know, so quince again is absolutely amazing, <laughs> but a lot of Kashmiris don't know how much is the value of quince outside Kashmir. You know, <laughs> nobody even buys quince. If you know, people have their own trees and they will use it, but nobody goes to the market to buy quince. If somebody is buying quince, you know, other people say, "Iska kya karoge?" You know, so those those are the things I'm talking about. So for but if they know that that's a market really out in the you know outside country where chefs know about quince and they want that produce i think the farmers can make a lot of money by 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 sending quince to the other parts of india different types of mushrooms and so these are the kind of mushrooms that are available in kashmir you know i'm not talking about morel but there's something called kanguchi we call it kanguch So the kanguchi looks like cloud ear fungus, and it's absolutely amazing, you know, because all these things are available when you go foraging uh, in your gardens uh, with little baskets in your hand, and you know you can pluck things from there. Uh, then there's another part called sonchal. So sonchal is basically almost like the leaves of nasturtium flower. So that again is a very very healthy sag to eat. So I think lot of leafy greens, a uh, lot of different flowers. You know, lot of flowers were used in the in the Kashmir cuisine, which now people have forgotten about. It. One of the flower which was called Kachnar ki Kali. In sure. English, it's called Bahunia flowers. So the Kachnar ki Kali is an absolutely amazing, uh, you know, vegetable again that can be included in the dishes. It's uh, very amazing, you know, and and when. when you look around other parts of india where people say are phool bhi to khata hai ha if you ask your grandmoms in every state there is a the consumption of a flower for example in bengal they make pumpkin flower ka pakoda like they use the pumpkin flower you know stuff and they make like tempura out of it but kumdo phool it's called in bengal so the pumpkin flower is stuffed and then you know dipped into a pakoda batter and deep fried and it's one of the most amazing dishes so there are so many dishes in our own country which are long forgotten and we don't know much about them very true chef very true recently i did a chutney uh, with the uh, gulmohar uh, ke flowers ke i did a chutney with sarso ka tel and uh, gulmohar ke phool and some uh, garlic and uh, soaked red chilies it really came out very very nice 
my wife Sangeeta, she did. She's actually doing a, a book on forgotten recipes, and uh, she did. Uh, jo Rajasthan ke jo uh, champa ke jo flowers hote, uske pakode. Wow. So there are so much to uh, hear, learn, and gather from the society that. Uh, एक जन्म भी कम पड़े मतलब इतनी सारी चीजें हैं हमारे पास आई वॉज आई थिंक इन योर लास्ट सेशन विद ऑरेंज सिटी यू टॉकिंग अबाउट सम फिफ्टी थाउजेंड आई थिंक हर्ब्स इन नागालैंड और समथिंग सो ऑल दैट इज रियली रियली ग्रेट टू नो सो आई थिंक वन लास्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम माई साइड ऑन स्ट्रेस बस्टर <laughs> yes yes so so how uh, you feel that uh, these ingredients are stress busters also or rather should we just follow you cycling uh, and uh, join your gang and <laughs> <laughs> no I, i think do do what makes you happy you know uh, whether it is learning music whether it's watching tv if that makes you happy but i think it's more important to be happy you know and healthy at the same time uh, so i think those are the two things don't just be very happy and be unhealthy i think both have to go hand in hand be healthy and be happy so do things that you enjoy doing the most uh, especially in these times don't don't look at news that pull you down don't forget those messages that pull you down uh, negativity will only beget negativity so once you, are, you know when you yourself are positive you always will need people who are positive and i think that's the way to go about in today's time especially so nice to hear from you chef really really uh, an honor to talk to you uh, on a common platform like this uh, one last word a uh, sentence a uh, motivational uh, thing for all the students who are watching uh yeah i think for all the culinary students out there my thing is you know focus on basics uh don't cook food like what you see on instagram and social media because to learn that food all you have to learn is technology and how to apply filters on that food uh so please focus on basics um uh, cook with your heart um and uh, serve with love you know that that's that's the thing thank you so much chef and uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, uh chef ravi mishra uh, for uh, allowing me to uh, be a part of uh, this orange city literature fest and uh, it's a real honor to talking to chef uh, bali thank and uh, being a part of it so really thank you and uh, i'm sure uh, people must have taken a lot of uh, uh, information with the session and i'm sure this is also available on the youtube as well uh, they can also uh, follow chef uh, bali on his instagram page or maybe uh, I think chef you you must be having some website as well and uh, web I don't have a website but uh, chef bali is my handle on instagram the man holding two cycles in his hand <laughs> you may follow me there and send me questions i'll be happy to answer perfectly all right very very nice thank you and have a great day to all of you uh, thank you. manshi thanks a lot thank you thank you so much sir for the amazing uh, session on behalf of orange city literature fest organized by sgi knowledge foundation i propose a really hearty vote of thanks to our guest avinda bali sir and moderator chef vimal dhar sir we sincerely express our gratitude towards your acceptance for the session and knowledge shared for us thank you so much sir our next session is art of leading through self self through your stories Thank you. 20 years of existence. Thank you. Two universities, 23 educational institutes, offering 137 courses. Raisoni Group of Institutions, a vision beyond.